Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest yes, in the indeed. building. Probably has the hottest record out right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mooski. Yo, what's, what's up, going on? Hey, how you doing, man? How's Good everything? morning, young king. What's the? Tell him the name of the record, man. She's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, MB. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mooski, are you in love, man? I heard about four records from you, and all the records sound like you in love. Is are you? <laughs> is that about one girl, multiple women? Let's discuss. Where do we begin? I mean, hey, you know, it's just about life. Mm -hmm. It's about life, man. So it's more than one woman. So you lie to all of them and tell nah, them Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Nah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, you know, I'm just pulling my music from a real place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just to make, to make sure that people can relate to it. You mm -hmm. know, I want to, I want to stay, I want to level with the audience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Give us some real music. Let's take it back. Let's, 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 let's see where Mooski's from and how he got into music. So yeah. you're from Alabama. Yes, sir. And I was reading, and, and you joined the military. Mm. So let's let's break that down. How you got in the military, and then how you got into music. Right. All right. So I started making music when I was um, I was like 13. You know, I come from like a real heavy uh, church background. You know, so my mom she was singing in the choir and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We was um real heavy into that. So I've always been around music. You know what I mean? So I was like 13, and I used to make music on my phone. Um, on this app called The Booth. Mm -hmm. I was recording music on there, but um, it was like, it was gospel rap at first. And then, you know, the older I got, you know, I started to like, like, um, I started listening to Wayne and stuff, so I wanted to rap a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to be like Wayne. And um, I heard Drake and I wanted to sing a little bit. So, you know, time time went on or whatever, but um, How the Marine Corps came about, like, I was just in high school and I really wasn't, like, I didn't, you know, I didn't apply to no colleges or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I knew I had to do something, you know what I'm saying? My sister just left to this big four-year college, um, and everybody's looking at me like, okay, what is he about to do? And so I knew I had to do something, but what, whatever I did, like, I wanted it. One, I was always a person who, like, was, uh, like, go after that, the, the money, you get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm always working. Mm -hmm. I'm always working. I'm a hard worker. You know, I was known for that. You feel me? So um, I was looking into a uh, military because one of my friends, one of my friends were going, but I was looking. I was in the army. Uh, I was looking at the army at first, um, and then just something about you know um, the Marine Corps. It just I, it just stood out to me. Mm -hmm. The hard work, like the pride of taking everything. You know, um, it's just some, it's something about that name. Just it carries weight. It holds weight. So I just had to. I, I wanted to go that route. I want to know more about this gospel music. What was, what was your first gospel record that you recorded? Uh, I, I can't even remember, bro. You don't remember? I, I can't even remember? remember. Yeah. I can't even remember. You remember your gospel rap name? Yeah, bro. It was like I used to be like a big fan of Trip Lee, bro. It was like like Trip Lee, Trip Lee Jr. or something like that, bro. Who was Trip Lee? Trip Lee, he a, he a Christian rapper. Oh, I'm a sinner. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. I, I, I know. Yeah. La, wow. I know the crate. That's where it starts. Trippy Red. Trippy Red. Not Trippy Lee. Yeah, like Trip Lee. So now, what, what was your um, what was your experience like in the Marine Corps though? Uh, it was great. It was great. Like I love the Marine Corps. Um, I loved everything about it. I love. I like the leadership role. I like, you know, just meeting people from all over the world, you know, and, and just like learning about them, learning different cultures and stuff. Like, I thought that was really dope. And, you know, just um, advancing through the ranks and, like I said, giving, getting that leadership role and being able to influence people and have an impact on people's life. And, I mean, I, I just think it was it was very dope. And it taught me a lot about myself. Um, it showed me who I, who I can be as a leader. You know, and I, I wanted more of that, but on a, on a more on like a global platform. Didn't you get uh, honor? What was it, dishonorable discharge? Oh no 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 no! Oh, we got bad honorable. information. Honorable. Honorable. honorable, honorable. Oh, what's the difference? I don't. I mean, yeah. So a dishonorable discharge <laughs> is like getting kicked out. You, you know don't. What I'm saying? You don't want that. Yeah, no, no, no. You don't want that. You don't what's honorable? Any, uh... Honorable is just like okay, you you served your four years honorably. Like you know, like you came here, you did what you're supposed to do, and now we, we salute you. Like, well, our producer told us you beat somebody up. Didn't he just come in here and say that? No. Nah. I must have heard him he wrong. He said he was then. honorable. He, he left honorably. Oh, I thought he said he charged. beat up a sergeant or something like that. But nah. he said he was a sergeant. He made it up to sergeant. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, he made sergeant. it up to sergeant. Oh, <laughs> I thought he sergeant. said he beat yeah. up the sergeant. My <laughs> bad. My I'm bad, sorry, Mooski. Sorry. Well, you you nah, nah. People hear what they want to hear. Nah. Man, people hear what they want to hear. Nah. What I like about you, though, is that you're, <laughs> you're very crazy. vulnerable in your music. Even like the song, like, Trackstar. It feels like somebody broke your heart yeah. and you were the one that was trying to communicate and get things right, but she just 
wasn't the right person for you. She was running from you. Right. Yeah, you know. So that's a real story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, track track star, like I said, like I pull from, I definitely pull from a real, you know, um, try to pull from real experience in my life. So, so it just makes the story better. You know, I, I could tell the story better. You know, when it's coming out of my life. You know, and I can really dig in deep and like give people something they can really connect with. Like that was the whole thing of track star. I wanted to, I wanted to take that concept and see how far I can run with it. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why, 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 why she's a track star? Like, why, why that I mean, term? She just like so. It's just like she runs from all the all, all the problems. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You you dealing with somebody? You, you dealing with somebody like on this end? You bringing like you coming to the table trying to take care of whatever going that's going on. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But she can't match that energy at the time. You know what I mean? So it's like you ready to deal with everything. Like like you ready for it, but mm -hmm. you know that's just something that um, you know, the the other person wasn't ready for. But when do you know as a man yeah. to stop chasing? I mean, you just gotta realize like, you just gotta realize really look at look at life and look at you know how things how things are going. Mm -hmm. Like if it's if it's if this is hurting you more than anything, you get what I'm saying. You know you just can't. You always gotta remember who you are as a person too. That's right. You get what I'm saying. Like you can't just get lost in it. You, you feel me? So, but I mean, everybody go through that in life at some point. You just mm -hmm. gotta. How did the song pop off? How did you create the song and what made it go? Because I heard it when I was in Atlanta and I was like, uh, I, I just assumed you were from Atlanta that they were playing it so much in Atlanta. So, how did the song pop off and take off? Because it's been out since so, last summer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been out since last summer. We dropped it uh, June last year. Um, We dropped it June last year. Man, it, like, ever since I dropped the and song. You were, assigned, you were independent. You were just releasing independent. stuff online. Yeah. So like, I dropped a song, bro. And like the first week, man, it did like ten, ten thousand. I was like, okay. I was like, dang, like this is the most I ever got. It got, cause my other songs had like five thousand streams total, bro. And it I took dropped a year them to like get five thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, bro, like every week it kept going up. It kept going up. Kept going up. Next thing you know, bro, it hit a we hit a million in six months. Wow. And then that same month right there, we hit another we hit another million. Mm -hmm. So like it just started like it's going like it just started stacking up. Mm -hmm. Um, we talking to labels. This like it's like around December, November, December. We already in Miami doing shows, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we talking to labels and stuff. We get to the top of the year. Um, January is still like it's going even more crazy now. February, um, and around this around January, like I'm I'm getting ready to make my decision, you know, with the label I want to sign to. Um, so we we work we work all that. I end up signing February 10th. Capital um, Records, right? Yeah, Capital Records. Mm -hmm. I signed February tenth, but I didn't. I didn't announce anything. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I didn't. I didn't want to announce it. Yeah, I just wanted. I wanted to. I, I really was just trying to stay focused, bro. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like I didn't want to be all out on it. Hey, I signed all about 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 Woody Woo. You know. Um, but around like that February time, bro, like, everything just like. And I was like, yo, like. Yeah, we saw it take off on TikTok. I always wonder: is that like a, is that strategic from the label? Is that organic? Like. Bro, everything that happened for Trackstar was organic, bro. Mm -hmm. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Everything that happened for Trackstar was organic. Definitely organic. And women love women love that song in particular, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, It really yeah. did speak to, to women so much. Why do you think that is? Uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like, I feel like, um, they, they think I'm talking to them. Like, they feel like I'm talking to them because they can just relate to what I'm saying. I you get. not? I mean, yeah, I, I, but I'm saying I made it personal to where, gotcha, like, gotcha. you get what I'm saying? Like, like is he talking about me? Like that's why that's why I see on Twitter and stuff. And then you got the fellas like like hey you know like hey like like you get what I'm saying? They back me up like yeah he, he's speaking the truth for here. Like I've been through this too, you know what I mean? So like, it's just like it's real relatable. That's A lot right. of your records are like that though. Forever not... girl, play your part, crushing, Heard. game mm -hmm. of love. Heard. You know, uh, w w let me tell you something. There's a lot of haters in this room, right? It's just they just can't help it, right? One of them, <laughs> one of them just walked out, and before you walked in, it's like I'm tired of these rappers acting oh. like they R and B singers. So, so so are you an R and B singer or a rapper? I like to do both, but mm -hmm. wait, but if I give you a song and tell you it's strictly R&B, it's going to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they haven't seen the full R&B side. Like, right now, I just tried to come in, and what I was trying to do, bro, I was trying to show um, my vocals in a way, like, at a rapper's pace. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I can hit these notes very sharp and precise at a rapper's pace. Like, you, like I'm trying to come in and do something different. I'm not trying to take, I'm not trying to uh, turn this into R&B. Because I can do R&B and I can mm -hmm. do hip hop, 
but I want to throw. Let me let me see if I can throw all this on one track. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me get on a let me get on the song and just create, bro. You know what I'm like? Like do something different. Like I don't I don't want to go by a blueprint that people already set up. Like I want to do something different so I can come in the game different and, and be sense. different. Because it's know? like the bars when you dun, 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 dun. Right. But, you, but it's bars. I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it because I'm not a musician. But it's like like rappers go. Dun, 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 <laughs> right. You know what I mean? R&B singers sing to drag things exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Drag it out. Now I wanted to ask. You know, you, you said you were a vet, and we have this conversation all the time. Mm. How do you feel that about this country taking care of their vets? You know, we, we especially in Atlanta, New York, and so many different places, you see so many homeless vets. And it, it almost feels like we don't do enough for our vets. They fight for our country. They can die at any given moment out there, you know, on, on the battlefield. But then when they come home, it's just like, all right, let it go. So how do you feel about the country and what, how they take care of their vets? Uh, I feel like, you know, um, in, in a certain... I kind of feel like the the word the words carry more than the action, you know. And I'm like every everybody, you know, everybody is, um, they're kind of like, oh, okay, so and so was a vet. Thank you for your service, you know. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. But man, it's it's some it's some people it's some military vets, bro. That like got some real stuff going on, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I guarantee you, most of those homeless veterans, but they have like mental problems, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like some people get in there and they just they they. They get in there, bro, and they go through so much. It just like it messes them up mentally, bro. You know what I mean? And they can't return to normal life. So like, there there has to be something. Like you know, they just need help, bro. Like you, you know okay. what I mean? Did the military have any impact on you in that way? Uh, like, it impacted me therapy? mentally because I was just so like when I first went into the military, bro. Like I bought into it so much, it kind of turned me into a robot at first. Like I didn't know how to like deal with emotions and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I'm a Marine, you know what I'm saying? We don't, like, we, man, like, we, like, we hardcore, like, we just blah, 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 woody woo. But I didn't know how to deal with all the problems I was going through, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. my dad passed when I was in boot camp. I went home, I, like, it was, I was getting close to graduating, so I went home, and it just felt weird. Like, it felt different, man. Like, my mom was crying, like, when she saw me, so I looked at my pops and stuff, I didn't know how to deal with that, bro. It made me uncomfortable, mm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, dang, bro, like, I'm emotionally numb, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it just turned me, like, cold like that. So I didn't know how to deal with my problems, bro. So I was handling it the wrong way. And so over time, bro, all that stuff built up, man. Like, like my mental was just, like, in a crazy, in a crazy spot, bro. And it's crazy because that's how I found music. That's how I found music to be, like, my venting tool. You know what I mean? And I get released through music. Like, so that that's really what helped me. Well, let's stay there for a second. It had to be something else, though. Did you go to therapy or anything? Nah, bro, I didn't Grief like counseling. Nah, like I, I didn't. Uh, I just, I used to talk to people, but I didn't like that. Was it's just something about like talking about stuff like that? Like I just, you know what I'm saying? At the time, I just couldn't. I just couldn't do that. Like, Cause as black men, they already make us sociopaths when we're coming up. Cause they tell right. us not to have any emotion, yeah. right? And then you come from a certain environment. You're in the hood. You really got to not show any emotion right. just to survive. Sometimes then you go in the Marines. And they're numbing you even more. Bert. So it's like you had a lot to unpack. Man, bro. Look, and see, this is this, this the main reason. When my when my pops died, bro, my drill instructor, I was in boot camp. My drill instructor came to me and said, he said, hey, man, you can go home if you want to. But he was like, if it was me, I'll just be like, you know, okay, my, my dad died. <laughs> Let's go. How you mean in, in my head, I was like, dang. You, you, like, if, I'm, I'm like, dang. But, like, this is my senior drill instructor. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, like, all right, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to go home, but I'm about to, I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back in a week. Just give me, just give me a week to, you know, just let me go to the funeral, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna come back. But yeah, so I did that. But like, it just it changed the way I thought at that time because I was like, okay, he's a marine, he been in, he's seasoned, so that's how I gotta be. You know what I mean? That, that's. But that's I ended up dad, figuring it out. Though. That's yeah. your, you know what I mean? For sure. Did you ever regret that? And like, yeah, for sure, bro. Man, I, I regret it, but at the same time. I'm glad it happened because it taught me how important mental health is. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because I started to see how much I changed over time. Because me, I'm a real outgoing person. I like going out, being around a lot of people. I like partying and stuff. You get what I'm saying? I, like, I just like being around people. I'm a people person. But over time, bro, like that, it was affecting me so much, bro. I, I found myself just going to the room every day, um, chilling by myself, drinking, like self-medicating. Like, yeah, That's I'm like, dang, doing. bro, like. Like what? What happened to me? Where people calling me, hey, bro, you want to go here this weekend? I'm like, nah, bro. And they're like, bro, that don't sound like you. And I'm like, I thought about it one day. I was like, dang, bro, like, it really don't. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, 
I started to realize that I was, uh, you know, depression. Uh, I had a lot of, like, I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And what I did when we get those, when we get those classes about counseling and stuff, I was just like paying attention, looking at all the um, signs and stuff they had up there, and I'm like, um, just looking at it. And I'm and, like, I'm like, dang, let's get kind of describing my situation right now. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But I felt like if I if I could if I could be aware of this, then maybe I don't need to go to counseling. Maybe I could just try to deal with this myself. Nah, like that's that's how I felt about it at the time. Nah, you gotta go. I, I go to therapy once a week. I got right. a sacred purpose coach. I meditate. You got you got to deal with it because, like you said, that shit will build up. Yeah, for sure. And boy, when you snap, you snap. Did you have a snapping moment? Oh, I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think I did. A breakdown. Just trying to. Now, at a certain at a certain time, at a certain time, like everything was like. Everything just caught up, bro. It was just too much going on, bro. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I, I go to my room. I'm just like, you know, I'm I'm just I'm praying. I'm, I'm like, man, like, what's going on right now? Like, mm -hmm. cause, bro, I'm so used to like, excuse me, everything that happened in my life is just like, damn, bro. Like at one point, man, I, I used to think like, like, bro, we curse or something, bro. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like so much stuff went left, bro, and it just like happened like back to back to back to back to back to back. I'm like, bro, like, what's going on, mm -hmm, bro? You mm -hmm, get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's getting to the point to where, like, whenever my grandma, when my grandma died, bro, like, I didn't even, I didn't even cry or nothing, like, bro, like, I'm, I'm a little kid growing up in the house where, like, bro, my pops used to go call the ambulance like once a week. You get what I'm saying? Like, he, like, well, he was I just that, that sick. I've seen that that your mom oh. and dad used to argue about the bills and, and yeah. the ambulance bills and bird man, cause like that gotta be scary. Your dad's sick, but you scared to call the ambulance because yeah. you know he might not be able to afford to pay the ambulance bill. Right. Yeah, cause like, man, I I think they told me one time how much it cost. It was like eight thousand, ten thousand every time he called it or something. And Jeez. I'm like, dang, you get what I'm saying? But he called it so much, bro. He called it so much because like he gets scared, bro, because he got heart problems. And so like sometimes um like he'll he like that thing will shock him. I forget what it's called. Like maybe um uh, uh, the, the something tilitator. Defibrillator. 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 Yeah, what's it called? Defibrillator. There you go. Yeah, defibrillator. Yeah, you yeah, just so, want one in this uh, group. I seen it shock him. I seen Stop it shock it. him one time. Like, and I was on the phone. I was on the phone calling the ambulance. You seen your mom shock him? No, no. I seen my my dad get shot by the defibrillator. Uh -huh. Like my pops, he was like screaming and sh like he was like screaming yeah. when, like when they shot him and stuff. And his body just like you know what I'm saying. So I was I was young when I saw that, but it was just like, dang, bro. And so whenever whenever my pops used to get sick and call the ambulance and like they arguing, but I'm like I'm like mom, like let them go, like let them go, like cause I'm you know what I'm saying. I'm mm -hmm. like I don't, I don't want nothing to happen to my pops. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So and then my mom was going through health problems too. It got to the point where my dad went to the hospital, but I ain't have to go see him. I'm used to this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to this. I'm going to school. Hey, uh, your daddy went to the hospital. Oh okay. I, I will, will, will he'll be home in two days. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, since you said the music was therapeutic for you, did you ever write about any of those experiences with your family? I ain't going to lie. The um, When I said, like, I found music as my venting tool, I wrote a song called I Cry. I recorded it. I never released it. But I think that that song was just, like, one of those uh, moments to where, like, this had to happen to show me, hey, music is what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, Music is what you need to talk. Like you need to start talking about your life and your music, cause that's gonna help. Like man, I wrote that song, bro. I woke up, I felt amazing, bro. Right. Like it, it, I felt like a new person. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like I felt like everything I was dealing with was just gone, bro, cause it just built up. It I built love, up. That's your therapy. Love, the music is your therapy. Yeah. I, I hear artists say that, and I love that y'all do that. But you still gotta sit down and talk to somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. You, you said something else too that was so real, and I tell people this all the time. Like they love to say black men don't like to go to the doctor. It's not that we don't like to go. It's that shit is expensive. Yeah, if you ain't sure. got no motherfucking health care. You don't want to go to no emergency room. I'll yeah, go like to no said, doctor visit. Dollars every yes, time. you gonna think about like, and we shouldn't have to think about. Should I call the ambulance? Yes. Right. Can I afford? No. Can I afford, afford to, call to call the ambulance? That's fast though, because like even even when I got out of the military, now you know the military like they have a, they have a good health care, but when I got out, you know I I started to think like like dang bro like um. I forgot. I forgot what happened, but I wanted to go to the doctor. I was like, "Dang, I forgot, bro! Like this now, it's gonna be a little bit too expensive." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. gotta pay out of pocket. So, man, I just, you know what I'm saying? I just kept, kept going, bro. You feel me? Like, and I know that's not good, but it's just like that's just how I was, how I was thinking about it. You feel me? I love this conversation because you do express your emotions very well. I want to get back to that, but that's the hater over there. That's the one that said <laughs> she don't know why you running around here singing 
and you oh, were a rapper. Right. That, that was you. Dang. What did you say then, Taylor? <laughs> what did you say? I said... Uh-oh. Get on the mic. Tell them what you said. Keep that same energy. Yep. <laughs> I said that I want to say that you're an R&B singer. Mm. Um, just because of my intake of r and I look at the old school, like right. Drew Hill, Boyz II Men. Right. But this new school, I should call it more Trap Soul. That's, That's not what she said. That she said is, that nigga is yeah, not no R and B singer. Hey, uh, he that, ain't no that, Drew that Hill. Made, that made sense though. But I'm, I'm, about give you some, I'm about to give you some true R and B music though. Just, just, just wait on. All right. We we got some ready. Okay. For y'all. I was gonna say, have you spoken to Drake yet? Because I saw you really wanted to get Drake on something. Has he reached right. out? Did he see that? No, no, no. Um, I, I haven't, I haven't talked to Drake. Um, I haven't talked to Drake yet or anything. I know, bro. You know, he working on um an album and stuff like that. So I know how that go. So I mean, we just working too. We just working. We know, like I was saying, I heard a lot of your records, and you express love well. It's, you're clearly in tune with your feelings in a real way. And they always say men don't know how to express their feelings. How did you get to that point when you tell us you were so emotionally numb? How'd you get to the point where you can just express love in records? Are even just right. feeling love from a woman? Right. I um I don't know, man. Like when um I just really sat down, like and and really thought, like when I when I'm writing this music, when I'm writing this music about how I feel, I'm like, how did I really feel? And when I first started doing this, bro, like it was something like it was like that that pride was still there, bro. Like mm-hmm. man, I, nah, I can't say it in the song, bro. Nah, I can't, bro. But then I got to thinking about it. I was like. Bro, it's probably like a million, millions of people out there who thinking like I'm thinking right now, bro. Mm-hmm. And they just don't speak on it. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to swallow my pride for this song. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to swallow my pride and, and say how I really felt because I think that's that's the best way to get people to relate to my music. Mm-hmm. And because Trackstar is one of those songs, it's like, it's like, dang, he got up in here. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I'm saying things that people, they're not just going to say. See, and what's crazy about it is, that's not stuff that I actually just say. I, but I can say it in my, it's easier for me to put that in my music than just talk. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's, that's what's crazy about right. the whole thing. A lot of guys want to admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, it, it took some time to get to that point, but it's just like, at the end of the day, like when, when you, when you have a vision for something and like you actually chosen to do something, it's just, you just find like you just realize who you are. You know what I mean? Like for some like everybody can't express their feelings. So if you can do it, then you can do that for them as well. Mm-hmm. So so you know what I'm saying? You just gotta bite the bullet on it. Like go ahead and swallow your pride and you know, just try to reach people. Who was the woman that cracked the code though? Cause you just told us how emotionally numb you were. Yeah. In order to write these records, you had <laughs> to have some inspiration. Who was the woman that bought you out of that out of that emotional numbness? I mean well, you, you don't even have to tell us about the woman, but how right. was that? How did the how how was that experience? <laughs> her her name is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, uh, because you had to be difficult in a relationship in the beginning. I mean, it's just like you know, like I say, man. O- over time, over time, you you learn, man. Me, I really look at life like, and I, I got this understanding when I turned twenty two. Mm-hmm. I'm about to be twenty four in June, but. At 22, I really slowed down and just really tried to look at life like, okay, let me look at all these series of events that's taking place in my life right now. And let me try to find purpose in all this. Let, let me try to see, one, why is this happening? Two, what can I do to prevent this from happening again? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I really try to sit back and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, do a self-eval and really try to learn from stuff. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And really, really try to... You know what I mean? Become better every day. Some things you can't change, though. Yeah. Like your father passing away, your grandmother yeah. passing away. There's no, there's nothing you can do about that. That's just life. Facts. Yeah, and with stuff like that, like, I just want to make sure, like, I can, like, somebody told me something one day. They said, control, control, like, worry about what you can control. Things that are out of your control, you know what I mean? You Serenity can't, prayer. Like, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage right. to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. For sure. Like, it's just like, because stress, man, stress is like very, very, That's very dangerous, bro. Absolutely. I never understood that. Bro. Like, people used to tell me that, like, man, I'm a, I'm a kid, bro. You get what I'm saying? I really don't, I really don't understand, like, I didn't understand that at that time. But the older I got, bro, because, like, it's like, bro, when I, when I turned 18, bro, I was really on my own for real, bro. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, 
with the problems I'm dealing with, like I can't go back to my parents and talk to that about it. Because one, my pop's gone. Two, my mama had a stroke. She can't, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. had two of them. Now she can't even talk, do nothing. Mm. So it's like, I'm really on my own out here, bro. You get what I'm saying? So you just got to learn, bro. You who's, your, learn. who's your mentors? Did anybody fill those roles? or? Nah, bro. Damn. The military did, I guess. Yeah, military, That's bro. That's probably why you like, went to the military. See, the thing about it is, though, uh, I really started to think, like, I really didn't, even with my pops past, I really didn't, like, Clean to nobody for like a father figure role. I just said, cause I was like, bro, like I got a little brother, bro. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So it, I got to get out here. I got to get out here and get to it, bro. Cause I got to teach my little brother something. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I'm really, I'm just out here trying to, trying to learn myself, trying to learn for myself, bro. You feel me? And try to tell my little brother like, or where I feel that. And so now I just try to cut it short for him. Mm-hmm. You well, know what's, what I'm what's saying? What's next for you with, as far as music is concerned? Album, EP, what, what, like what, what's? I know the labels on your back. To, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm I'm putting together a project right now. Like I'm trying to put together a project, man. Get it, get everybody a, a body of music, you know, that they, that they can feel, bro. Like I I want to I want to give everybody some healing, mm-hmm. you know, everybody who's dealing with something. Like How you gonna give somebody real, some healing? You ain't really got no healing yet. I don't know, bro. Like I, I feel like I have. Mm-hmm. I came a long way. I came a, a very very long way from, and I think that's why all this happened in music. Mm-hmm. Because because I really started you know to grow, I really started to grow when I started to talk about all this stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think God has blessed me for it. Now He's like, okay, you found your voice, you learn you learn how to use your gift, and now you know I'm I'm, I'm gonna bless you for that. Are you doing a remix to is that? Star? You say what? Are you doing a remix to track stuff? For sure. Is it done yet? You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean. Is it? You say what? Is the project called Melodic Therapy? Is the project called Melodic Therapy? It is. It is for sure, bro. If you went to real therapy, you would be a beast, man. Because you know, a lot of times we know how we feel, mm. but we don't always know why we feel that way. And I think right now you being transparent, and it's easy to be transparent, Word. but it's different to be vulnerable. Word. You know what I'm saying? Like once you really get a handle on what those emotions and those feelings are, and you like really express that vulnerability, oh man, you'd be a beast, bro. Word. I don't know. Yeah, I, I probably, I probably do need to. You know Why what I'm not? saying? Check that out. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Why I probably not? need to check that out. You think you would put out that song? I cry. Probably. Like I'm. You should put it out, man. I, yeah, I probably What's should. Up? Cause I ain't gonna lie, man. Like that song right there. I like that's the first time I grieved my father's my father's death, and that was like wow. two years after. You I'm know sure what I'm saying? A lot of people grieving too, and that could, that could hit home for a lot of people. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't never thought about that. You know. So what you I'm saying? cried like, recording it clearly. Yeah, I, cr- I cried writing it for sure. Like. That's just the first time, like, yeah. a, like, but it, it felt, it felt good though, bro. Like it was, it was crazy, bro. You feel me? Like, it was just crazy, bro. Cause I was just like, just dealing with a lot, bro, and trying to act like nothing happened though. That was my, that was the thing about it. That's niggas. Like, that's yeah, what we I was do. Trying, like, I was trying, like, yeah. I wasn't dealing with nothing. You know, like people, people that I work with, they didn't even know, they didn't even know my life story till like towards the end of my enlistment, and then they were like, they ain't started here. I ain't, I didn't know, I didn't know you was going through it. Like you can't even tell, like you couldn't work so happy mm. every day. And you're doing all this blah, 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 blah. But, you know, like, I just, that, that I cross on, bro, it did something for me. How do you think you would have mourned the loss of your father differently if you had not gone to the Marines? Uh, I probably, I probably would have mourned it. I probably would have mourned it at, you know, in the, the viewing at, and then in the funeral. Because, mm-hmm. right, the viewing and the funeral, bro, you, I was sitting there like this. You feel what I'm saying? It's like I was mad, bro. It's like the only emotion I had was anger, bro. That's fine. You get what I'm saying? Like that's the emo- that's the only emotion I had. I was I was like mad. I was like, dang, bro. Like, like is it like you know what I'm saying? You like, should be mad. I was you lost like, your pops. Yeah. And because and then I got my little brother, little sister, and older sister, like sitting there. So I'm like, man, I got to be strong for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the man now, so I can't I can't be crying. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, you can. Like that, that, that's feel the way your I was feels. Thinking, that's how you felt though. That's how yeah. you felt though. That's but you're right. But, ang- and anger, but anger is a good emotion. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, yeah. I think we look at these situations like, well, I'm not supposed to be angry right now. Who says? Right. Who says you supposed to be sad in this moment? You might be angry right now, sad tomorrow, right. sad two years from now like you were. Right. Who says you got to be whatever in whatever moment? Facts, though. You remind me of old dog from Menace, man. <laughs> you don't see Men's Society. He do. <laughs> he even dressed like him with the sweatshirt, with the, sweatshirt. the jeans. Yeah, 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 you remind yeah, me yeah, of old dog bit. from Menace a little bit. Right. I, I, I Why thought... couldn't you just say Lorenz Tate? Why had to be the old dog character? Because it ain't Lorenz Tate. Because it's old dog in the movie. Lorenz Tate's a totally different character. You seen Menace before? No. You seen Menace Society? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, bro, for sure. No, you didn't. Look, bro. I, I'm. But he said like minutes, so I'm sitting like I'm trying to think. Like yeah, all I said was minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sitting there like I'm just I'm going along with. It. I'm laughing and stuff, but I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Don't do that. Don't do that to people. Don't just go along. Please, the old man. Let me just laugh with the old nigga. Okay. But old when when you're a certain age, you say minutes. Right. You know what I mean. Now I saw you say you want to put a you you you, you want to put a dream together. You said you want to come in the industry and do something that nobody has ever done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you have that plan in place? I mean, um, for sure. Like, I think you're talking about the remix. I said I want to put the dream team. Put oh, that's what that was. It was for the yeah. remix. Oh, I thought you were just talking about your career. Uh, I mean that too, bro. Okay. Like, I, I definitely, I just want to be different, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I look at people like, um, you know, like Michael Jackson and Drake. Them two, like those two, are like the biggest. My two biggest influences when it comes, like, you know, to, uh, like, where where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I want to put both of them together. You get what I'm saying? Like, like it's like I want to, I still want to do want to do the pop. I still want to do hip-hop. I still want to do R&B. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be me, bro. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do anything but just be me, bro. I just want to be me. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you I want to do it in my, in my way. I mean, yeah, I can, I can, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I can. Cause you start talking about Michael Jackson, I need to see this move. I, I, I read the, I read the jig, moves. I read the jig right now. You feel what I'm okay. saying? Okay. I read the jig. He don't know what jig means. Ooh, I'm from the south. I don't know what the jig is. It's just an old school term. Uh, I read the jig right so now. It, so is the remix, that. is the remix locked in already? I mean, I mean, we we working. We we got it. We got it in the works right now. We got it in the works right you now. You sure you don't want to debut it right here on the Breakfast yeah, Club? Yeah, yeah. Now we. <laughs> I don't think it's done yet. Is it done yet? I mean, we 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 working on it. We working on it. Open that door. How, let me call Chris. How many people on it? How many people? How many people on it? Chris, Chris. you gonna debut the, the remix right now? You mean who? The remix. He said he want to play the remix he right now. Play the remix right now. <laughs> oh, now I got nothing to do with that. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah. Uh, When's it dropping? You can't tell us that either. Nah. I mean, I I rather I rather give y'all, you know, like, I I rather I rather you know. Have have like real word behind it, you know. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. I tell you what it is, and I want it to be that, you this know? shit better be worth it. <laughs> All right. What was your favorite? <laughs> you better have some amazing people hey, on this bro, record. Look, I need look. to hear Chris Brown, somebody, Miguel. Man, we gonna Stop we gonna it. put it together Drake. right. Drake, I need to. We gonna put it together right, bro. Okay, let's get put it together now, right. Now, before you. What was back? your favorite? What was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite TikTok challenge? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh. I think I think the running one was dope, um, I th and I think they just started a new one or something. Uh, like everybody got everybody run, and some people get on the ground and like they they pause it. Like mm -hmm. um, I probably that one. I'm probably about to do that one. They do what? Like like they 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 press play. It's like a countdown, like three, two, one, and everybody run. And but so, like a few people get caught caught up in it before like when everybody lay down. It's she, like a sound he ain't not on TikTok. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 really, I really don't like that either, but they um, Unk showed me that yesterday. Now, did your military training, is there anything you learned in the military that, that prepared you for the music industry? Anything everything. You, everything. I feel like it's the same thing. Yeah. Waking up for interviews. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. you, you, got a, you got a time schedule, you got stuff you got to get done, mm -hmm. and you just got to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's, it's like the it's same thing, bro. Mm -hmm. Same thing. All right. Now, it's early. I know it's early. But people would say, Let, let's hear the brother sing. Don't do it. He can do it. Oh, he my God. Got he got confidence in himself. Mooski. He's got this. Mooski. He got this. He's military. Mooski. Why would you do this to him? So you ain't get don't ready. do it if you don't feel what up to it. What did they say in the military? Stay ready so you got to get ready you, something you, like that? You know yeah. your vocals better than we do. You might be ready. You may not. If you're sure. not ready... Stand down, soldier. <laughs> Stand down, soldier. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> hey, I mean, I don't know. I think I think I'm kind of hoarse right now, for real, for real. Hey, man, I'm not. I'm not judging you. <laughs> this well, guy might be trying to set record, you up bro. for failure. I don't introduce know. Introduce your record, then. Yo, it's your boy Muski. It's my new single, Track Star. All right, here it is right now. It's the Breakfast Club. Thank you for joining us, brother. Hey, yes, sir. I appreciate y'all having me. All right.